All right, good evening to everybody. Nice to see everybody in house. Good evening to everybody, or good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you're watching this at home. Um, if you're watching this for the first time, my uh, my weekly intro. My name is Doron Yitzchak Ibor. I am not a rabbi. I'm a specialty. It's called a coach. And I help people break through unconscious blockages that seem uh, insurmountable. It just it seems like it makes no sense that it's going to be any different. Or and the the way I go about this is by venturing into a part of the unconscious mind that today is commonly known as the shadow. And before I continue, I must uh, give the Ilu Nish, Nishama of uh, Tzvi Ben Ari HaKohen. His Nishama should have an Ilu um, for these two pray Torah. And Rafosh Shalema for Ruven Sisle Ben Malka, Ruti Batalia, Noam Ben Tami, and Yaakov Ben Dina. They should all have a Rafosh Shalema. The way, so what I was saying was that the way that I help people break through these unconscious blockages, which in itself is a quite an interesting term, because unconscious means unaware. So how do you have an? How do you know? Meaning you're aware of the fact that you have an unconscious blockage if the blockage, blockage itself is is unconscious. Then itself is a journey to that realization itself. Um, the the way that I I help people break through, let's say, a money block is not by helping them do money better, right? Or the way that I help a person through, let's say, a relationship block is not by helping them do relationships better. Although, within each, within each blockage or within each um, area of practice, there's a certain level of, let's call it, minimal um, professionalism or min minimal etiquette. You've got to be good at what you're doing and whatever it is that you're doing. But the point that I'm trying to make is that I don't help people uh, dive deeper into their craft. What I do do is I help people dive into their unconscious mind to a place commonly known as the shadow. So what is in the shadow? It's the place where I've already judged myself negatively. It's a place where I've already judged myself negatively. And why do we need this shadow? Like why does this whole shadow thing exist? The reason that we need a shadow is because in the, the master program that we live in, this Yudke Vavke program, and I explain what I mean by master program. If you want to understand godliness, the best analogy that there is for godliness, at least for um, Elohim, because Yudke Vavke is above um, the laws, so to speak, the law, na nature, the, the nature, the natural aspects of the laws. Yudke Vavke's got a, there's a, uh, it takes a story into account, which the laws don't take a story into account. Um, but if you want to understand godliness, the best analogy that you have to understand godliness is technology, digital technology, internet. How every single dot, every character is unique, indispensable, non-replaceable, irreplaceable. If you want to send an email, you can't play around with those sequence of characters. If the email is john at gmail.com, you can't suddenly decide that you want to make a Jonathan at gmail.com. You can't suddenly decide that you want to make a Johnny or Jay. It's, it has to be exactly the way, and you can't turn the dot into a comma. You can't turn the at into a plus. You have to keep it exactly as it is. It's like, it's like a code, and that's what, that's what Lashona Kodesh is. It's a source code. So if you think about technology and the world that we live in, the best, uh, it's called the mashal, the best analogy or, or uh, uh, parable that we have for this world that we live in is a website, okay? Because a website has got two aspects to it. It's got the experience site, the experience site, which is, uh, it's called the user interface. And then it's got the, what, what's called the back end. And the user interface and the back end are extremely different. You could say that the back end is the truth 
and the user experience is an illusion. <laughs> yeah, you agree? You could say that. The one is the other, but when you go to a website developer and you want a change, he doesn't go to the user interface and make a change there, because that's just an experience. He goes to the back end and he makes a change in the code. Right? So it's the same thing is that this, this world that we live, this reality that we live in, we're, we're experiencing the user interface <clears throat> of what is. And it, what, what is this world called, this revealed world? What is this world called? It's called the world of illusion. It's called Alma de Shikra, the world of lies. Because what we're seeing not, is not what is. If we could see what really is, we'd see the atoms, you know, we'd see, at least, at le you know, in this, in this physical dimension, if we could see what's really here, we would see the, uh, the code. And what is the code? The code is Tserufim, combinations of Hebrew letters. So just like you take, like for HTML or Java or whatever the uh, uh, website code that, uh, that is an application, it's basically connection, uh, uh, um, Serafim R, uh, what's the word that's, that's eluding, me, eluding me at the moment? Combinations, when, when you combine these, these characters, then in if whatever the application is, it produces, in, in the user side, it, it, it produces an experience, it produces a website with whatever the details are. So when Hashem puts together these um, 22 sophisticated pieces of like technology called the letters, when Hashem puts them together, they actually create things. That's, they, they, they create things. In fact, um, what Adam Harishon, the reason he was able to name everything is because he could see what the Tzirufim are. He could see the actual letters that make up whatever it is that they make. He could see the code and he was basically reading what the code says. So in this master program, so if the, the website that we live in, if it, the, the, the master program would be called UK Vavke, the Yud and the K, the first Yud and the first two letters, the Yud and the He, they represent contraction. And the, the Vav and the He, they represent expansion. What that means is that in this reality that we live in, in this master program of UK Vavke, that means that things have to contract before they expand. That's, that's the bottom line. If you had to look at like the absolute bare, bare, bare bottom fact of this world, is that uh, nothing can expand before it contracts. That means that things, when things contract, that means that they are about to create, when the contraction is over, they're about to create an expansion. So. Until Mashiach comes and the master program changes from a Yud and a Hay and a, to a, and a Vav and a Hay to a Yud and a Hay and another Yud and a Hay, until that happens, things have to contract before they expand. Now, the ramifications of that, what I've just explained now, the ramifications are vast. Because, because it's a master program, that means that you cannot even fathom what it's like. Can you imagine jumping without bending your knees? You can't, you can't even imagine it, because the, whatever the elevation is, you'd have, to, you'd have to create a propulsion, the negative force, the contraction, which would be bent knees, in order to, to jump up. If I say, can, can you imagine a spring expanding without it contracting? We can't imagine that, because in our, in our logic, things have to contract, the spring has to contract in, in order for it to expand. But if you can make space in your mind to, 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 to sort of understand with, with, within the current master program that we're living in, is that when the Gilead Shlema happens and things begin to change like on a, on a master program level, that one of these things means that things will be able to expand before they contract. They won't need to contract in order to expand, is what I'm saying. Okay? That means that a spring would... I don't quite understand how this would happen because I can't imagine it, can't fathom it, but the spring would be able to expand without needing to contract first. Now, what this means is that we would not need to have a negative imprint in order to have 
a positive expansion, a positive uh, uh, polarity. Right? Well, that's ultimately what that means. Because in this duality, in this zelo madze, what that means is that in order for me to shine my light, I have to have, my neshama had to go through a boot camp as such. A, a boot camp of light. And that boot camp of light is like, well, let me ask you. If you think of like, like the highest unit that you can think of, the, uh, the uh, SAS or the Navy SEALs or the commandos or Seret Matkal or whatever, if I said to you like, how are those elite units, how are their boot camps? You say like, well, they're pretty tough. Obviously they're pretty tough because the greater the Yerida, the bigger the Aliyah, right? The greater the tension in the bow, the further the arrow flies. So, we contain, in proportion, it's not one for one, because if, it were, if, the, if, the, if the proportion of light to shadow was one for one, that means that the archer would pull the arrow back, let's say half a meter, he would let go, and how far would it fly? Half a meter. If the ratio of light to shadow was one to one. Mm -hmm. But that's not what happens, isn't it? It's beautiful. If you think about it, like the, the technicality of it, that when the archer pulls back, it pulls back a, a, a half a meter, and he lets go of it, it flies many, many, many times a hundred meter, uh, the half a meter. So there's a pasuk. I'm just going to tell you quickly. The ratio is one to five hundred. That's for every one part back, it flies forward five hundred, five hundred times that. And the pasuk to prove this is it says no se avon avon no avon al shelushim val ribayim that Hashem carries over the sins and sins and excuse me sins and transgressions of sins into a father to uh, sons for three and four generations so we take the higher number which is four then there's another pasuk that says no se chesed lalafim. He does chesed to thousands. What's the minimum amount for thousands to be thousands? Mm -hmm. Two thousand. Mm -hmm. One thousand is elef, but two thousand is alafim, at least. So we take the two thousand to the four, and we've got one to five hundred. So this ratio, I have to contain within me a certain amount of contraction. Let's call it in order. Let's call this contraction darkness. I have to contain within me a certain amount of darkness in order for what? In order for my light to shine. That's just how it is in the, within the laws of this world that we live in, this Olam Asiya, this, this master program of Yudke Vavke, is that in order for me to excel at something, I have to have something propelling it. Agreed? So if you look at a very, very, very fast car, What's the fastest car you can think of? Tesla. Say what? A Tesla. A Tesla. <laughs> so okay, there's the Tesla. It's a, a, the, 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 the rule would still apply. I was thinking of a, 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 an internal combustion engine. So if you think about like let's say a McLaren F1 or a, or a Bugatti Veyron or like these like, these massive supercars or Lamborghinis, you know that they're going to have a massive, massive, massive engine. Like, you, you know, obviously, what, what else would create or propel such ridiculous speeds, right? And inside those engines, what is it actually containing? It's containing massive, massive force. Massive force. Within each cylinder, there's an explosion. There's an, it's called an internal combustion. And it's containing massive amounts of pressure, massive amounts of negative force, the same way that the, the archer is pulling back, he's containing within, his, within this, this uh, position, he's containing all the force, his, it, all the attention is on his muscles. The same thing if you're riding up a, a, a hill and your, your, and your quads begin to burn, that's the, that's the force, that's, the, that's what you're fighting against, so to speak, that's what's creating the propulsion. Now the same thing is that like in order for you to be whoever, whoever it is that you need to be in this world, your Neshama had to put you through, had to choose a family with a specific set of parents, which were the negative pole and the positive pole. What that means is if you, would like, if you think about an incubator with batteries, all you think about 
excuse me, would be negative and positive because when you think about a battery, that's all that really comes to mind, right? That's all that really comes to mind. You've got, a, you've got a, one side that's got a minus, you've got one side that's got a plus. So this negative and positive, this thing plays out everywhere in life because it's a law, it's a law of polarity. This is just how, so it's one of the, one of the aspects of Elohim, of Hateva, of, 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 of nature, of, of this world that we live in. So, in order for you to have a specific type of area of excellence, whatever it is that you're good at, then that would be your light, to use the previous analogy of the elite units, that would be like the elite units' um, special ability. But in order to have that, you had to go through something. There had, to, there had to be something that made that specific talent, that specific ability, that made it actually even possible. So in order for you to have that aliyah, you, there had to have been a Yerida. There had to have been. You know, people talk about Yerida Letzerich Aliyah. They usually talk about it only when it makes... There's some sort of comfort. There's some sort of consolation, you know. I hear people sometimes talking about going through tough times. They talk about, yeah, it's a, it's a Yerida Letzerich Aliyah. It's a, it's a descent that, you know, in order for there to be an ascent. So that's true. But the thing is that it's not just a consolation. It's a law. There absolutely cannot be any type of aliyah without a yerida that is propelling it. All right. So where I'm going with all of this is like how it fits into the own human mind is that our 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 lights is housed in our own darkness. That's basically what it boils down to. Our light is housed in our own darkness. So Moshe Rabbeinu. Um, Although he had this uh, speech impediment, he turned out to be the world's greatest orator ever, you know. Parshas Sefer Tvarim, it's all of his words. But he had a speech impediment. And you see, you, you see these uh, seemingly paradoxes like uh, throughout everywhere. If you look at your own life, everything that you're good at had its origin in some sort of pain. Some, it's called the negative imprint, just like with Kodak pictures. So... I shared in one of the previous installments that in Pasha's Pinchas, uh, and I heard this from uh, Rabbi Yaakov Vashovsky, just Baruch Shammar, that when you say something, you give the source its credits, then you bring Gula to the world. So I heard Rabbi Yaakov Vashovsky speaking about, uh, in Pasha's Pinchas, about, um, um, he spoke about Hatzel, the shadow, and he was very, very into it. He was speaking about the inner child and how important it is, and how the Tanaim, the uh, rabbis of the Mishnah, at the time of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and the, uh, these Tanaim are very much in, in touch with their own inner child. He says that you see, you see it often that they would they would cry freely, they would kiss each other. There was there was a certain level of youth of uh, of uh, tmimut, of this innocence that was alive in them. And he spoke. He speaks. He speaks also about Sod Hatzel, the the secret of Tzel, which I've yet to delve into. But anyway, he was speaking about um, Briti Shalom that, that uh, um, Pinchas was, was gifted with Briti Shalom. And um, the bottom line of that, who was this Briti Shalom between? Um, metaphysically speaking, it was between the darkness and the light. And this is very, very profound because as someone like, what I do for a living is that when, when, when these people come to me, when, when clients come to me with a, a feeling of stuckness or a, um, a, a series of seemingly un, like very, unlucky things that just keep on happening and it just seems like impossible or like uncanny there's always there are always clues you know when things happen like this and there's, there's some sort of um, I don't want to call it poetic justice but there's some sort of um, theme that always there's some sort of common denominator there's some sort of common theme that always underlines a specific issue that always comes back to the shadow like, like always everywhere so in my last few minutes, what, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to explain here is that our darkness and our light come together, at least until the Geula Shlema. Um, you, everything that you're good at has its origin in shadow, but on the other hand, all of, you, all of your problems in life, and your patterns and things that seem to be just like your own type of, let's call it baggage or bad, uh, bad uh, um, mojo, Bad energy, negative stuff, bad luck, everything is rooted in the shadow. And the, the, the bottom line to everything 
Obviously, I've said it before that shadow processes need to be facilitated because they can be extremely challenging because they bring up stuff that you naturally want to use specifically as an individual, as a private, as a private person, as an individual. You don't want to look at and will avoid at any cost because of the type of um, subjective pain that is associated with these things. That's why it needs to be facilitated. But the bottom line toward, uh, uh, that underlines every process of healing and breakthrough is compassion. Is compassion. And it's so, because we have a Yetzirah, we have a, a, this, this natural bias towards negativity and self-criticism. It is so, the, the switch, the default switch is already on self-resentment, people. It's already on self-resentment. It's already on, and it can be like, because, especially if you're like a person that's like highly valued, because you've already transgressed your values somewhere in your life because no one's perfect, you've also already judged yourself very, very harshly. And that's why the shadow process can be such a challenging one because you're dealing with, with, like, with such harsh judgment that's already been inflicted on the self at such a young age without any parental supervision at knee-jerk reactions. And the, 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 I don't want to say solution, but the, 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 the key to everything is self-acceptance and self-compassion the same way that you would tell someone else. So that you need to be able to have that self the, the compassion that you can give to someone else, you need to be able to turn it on yourself. And I think that is actually what is meant by ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. Um, or maybe it's the other way around, but the, 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 the real bottom line about healing and breakthrough is self-compassion that needs to be practice as something you've got to you've got to take it on you've really got to take it on as something that, that is important because it, these things are so subtle and um, I'll end on this there are some people that have already reached out to me because in their in their uh, their journey the contraction has got to a place where it's very very difficult but there are also there are other people that hear me talk and say like oh my son needs this or my friend needs this or my my, my cousin needs this or my why someone else needs this. I just want to say that there will come a time, I hope, I hope that, I hope that it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like this, and I hope that uh, it happens before, before, you know, as soon as possible. But everybody has shadows, and everybody is already set towards um, harsh self-judgments and everything that comes along with that. And there is when things seem like there is like there, there, there's no hope or that uh, there's like this bad sort of lack or bad energy, it's not. Everything that is happening is happening under Hashgacha and uh, there is this agreement, there is this Brit Shalom, there is this covenant of peace between the light and the darkness that ultimately everything is for your betterment. The, the, thing, that needs to, the, the thing that needs to happen on a personal level is to really like look inside to look inside to find where I might be judging myself and to really just turn on self turn on self compassion more than less. Have a wonderful week and a Shabbat Shalom.